recently discovered corpse of Sergeant Sam Harper, killed by friendly fire during the first Gulf War, is returned to his all-American hometown. But when Sam rises from the dead to punish the unpatriotic, only his young nephew and a bitter Korean War veteran, soul icon Isaac Hayes of Shaft and South Park fame, can stop his red-blooded rampage. Draft dodgers, tax cheats, crooked politicians, and flag burners beware. Uncle Sam wants you dead. I'm Corey. And I'm Paul. And we are the The B-Movie Bros. Here we review B-movies and other low-budget films as critically and intelligently as possible. We're broadcasting from Millvale Studios in association with the River's Edge Network. So, so before you say anything, did they really reference South Park in the back of it? They really did. Wow, that's they were really trying to get people to watch this. And this is like in the section where like no one goes to, so like if somebody happened to be there, oh, South Park, cool. So on this week's edition, we bring you Uncle Sam, the patriotic slasher film from 1996. So let's take a look at the cover. We already gave you what was on the back of it in our introduction. So what do we see here? On the front, we just see a zombified-looking version of Uncle Sam. He um, is wearing his Uncle Sam hat. It looks very zombified, dead, and he's pointing at you like in the... um, and the military posters. He's got his nice little Uncle Sam goatee going of there. He's got these yellow eyes. Yeah, it actually looks really cool. I like it. Um, we got a tagline on here. I love my taglines. It is, I want you dead. Very clever. Kind of like the army poster. I want you. I'm actually surprised no one had thought about that tagline beforehand um, for... 1997 when this movie came out it seems um it seems pretty obvious we've got lots of red white and blue everywhere and if i waggle the case back and forth we can tell that it's shiny it's like a rare pokemon card oh my bringing back memories there so i got this movie uh probably when i was 16 or 17 years old out of the horror section at one of the exchange uh used dvd stores so, so you got this like eight years ago, and you haven't watched it till um till you watched it with me. Um, no, I've I watched it probably when I was sixteen or seventeen, and I hadn't been exposed to to too many horror movies yet. So, this is the first time I've watched it in about eight or nine years. So, your initial thoughts, looking at the cover and hearing the back, what are you thinking that this movie is going to be like, Paul? I was expecting this to be a really cool kind of ironic um twist on on uh, horror movies with like uncle the embodiment of america killing people just like who aren't patriotic i thought it was gonna be really tongue-in-cheek i thought it was gonna be, be a lot of fun to watch but um it, just like looking at the cover and reading the back of it and seeing how low budget it was that's that was the impression i got from it what about you you know, looking at the cover, I'm thinking it's going to be like an uncle, a, a zombie Uncle Sam, or a demon Uncle Sam conjured up during some kind of seance, like maybe the president and his cabinet turned to witchcraft to rid the country of un-Americans, something ridiculous like that. It's a bunch of zombies going, vote, I mean, seeing vote. as how it, it takes place on the 4th of July weekend, I am hoping to see fireworks in it. Uh, I was hoping some for some firework-themed deaths. And, of course, with any slasher flick, uh, I'm hoping for some murder. Murder's oh, always a good thing. I mean, dead is right on the front cover, so there better be some people dying. So that's that's my expectations. Anything you want to add? No, that's about it. I mean, it's literally just the picture of a zombified Uncle Sam. There's nothing else except the name of the cover and the tagline. And even on the back of the box, the, the pictures that we have... You can't really tell what's going on in one of the pictures. The other picture is just of Isaac Hayes, and then uh, I'm out, an Uncle Sam looking through a window at a woman with a towel. Well, let's be honest. Isaac Hayes was the best part of the movie by far. Well, yeah, he's the only person in the, the description of the movie that's named by name. And throughout the movie, I just kept calling him Uncle Sh- Uncle Sam and Chef. I, I couldn't help myself. Yep. It's pretty easy to put some chef lines in there. Oh, yeah. So, speaking of Isaac Hayes, let's get into some of the characters here. Time for some character talk. So, our main character, who is our title character, Uncle Sam, is Master Sergeant Sam Harper. He was a special assault unit operative and was killed in action and missing for over three years. 
He enjoyed killing from a young age and expanded upon his violent tendencies by joining the military. He was an abusive husband and brother who controlled his family through fear and pain. He was also the uncle to one of the main characters, Jody. Jody's a boy, by the way. So we have Jody, who was Sam's nephew. Like, who names her son Jody? Seriously. And he idolizes Sam and hopes to be like Sam one day. And that's about as far as Jody's character goes. We have Jody's mom, who I don't think is ever named in the movie. I just called her Jody's mom. And she didn't talk much about her brother or her ex husband. And she seems to be very distrustful of all men. You have Sam's wife, Louise Harper. She was devastated at the discovery of Sam's body. Uh, not because she was sad that he was dead, but that she was afraid he would come back to hurt her. We had Sergeant Jed Crowley, who was played by none other than... Isaac Hayes himself. The only survivor of his Korean War unit. He lost his leg in the war. He was Sam's mentor, and the only one who saw Sam's true nature from an early age. We've got Mr. Crandall, Jody's teacher, who protested Vietnam, and hints at uh, himself fleeing the country to avoid being part of the war effort. Um, we have a random army sergeant who is the person who informs Sam's family of his body's discovery, and uh, his role in his role that he plays in life is just trying to have sex with mourning spouse's parents, not parents. Getting into morning spouse's pants. We've got Ralph, who uh, was the mom's boyfriend. He's a lawyer, a cocky asshole, and a tax evader. Oh my, the worst kind. Well, spells his own doom there. <laughs> Willie, who was the town peeping Tom. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Willie, <laughs> peeping Tom. I get it. Congressman Cummings, who is the <laughs> only person to show any kind of sense of self-preservation... Because as soon as somebody dies when he's in town, he's, he's like, like I want to get out of here. Yeah, like everyone else, um, whenever people whenever people start dying, they're just like, well, you know, it is 4th of July. May as well finish the parade. But then, of course, you know, his publicist is like, no, we'll stay. It's a better news story since people are being murdered all around us. Then we've got this creepy kid who is Jody's friend. He was horribly disfigured in a fireworks accident the year before this movie, and for some reason shares a psychic link with Sam. Yeah, there's like a cliche in horror movies where like little kids and um, people with certain disabilities have like psychic abilities. It's like to make up for um, what they have, what they've lost. You know, a very convenient situational kind of thing. So even though you can't walk or can't see, you've got. A psychic link to a serial killer, and that almost makes it okay. I mean, I think it would have been better if he was, like, a wheelchair ninja instead of a wheelchair psychic. That would have been awesome. Like, blind paraplegic ninja. That would just be, like, sweet. We should it's make like that running movie. running people over with his chair. And so that's... Throwing ninja stars. That's all the characters that matter, and even some of them don't really matter. I don't think most of them matter, really. So, let's get into some plot points here. So, spoiler alert for anyone who's been waiting since 1996 to watch this movie... We're going to get some things said here. So the movie starts out with a down helicopter, and Sam's body is found, and that is on June 14th. Then we have a montage of stock footage Uncle Sam's in parades and parties and all that good stuff. Probably the best part of the movie. Montages are always good. Then we're introduced to Jody and his mom. Then Luis is informed of Sam's body being found. We're introduced to Jed, who is, of course, Isaac Hayes. The family goes through a regular day with discussions of the night before. Jody talks about his uncle in his class. Sam's body is brought to Jody's house. They have dinner with Ralph. Then we have Sam's wake. We're already at the 29-minute mark, folks. Nothing happens to this point. Jody and Jed have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. It's now July 4th, and Sam reawakens. At the, at right at midnight on July 4th. Then the kids disrespecting... There are kids disrespecting America in a graveyard by burning flags and putting swastikas on gravestones. We have a slow motion shot of medals being pinned onto Uncle Sam's flesh. Then we have the peeping Tom scene. And Sam makes his first kill at 42 minutes. Now, mind you, this is only an 89-minute movie. 
We have two more murders in the next couple minutes. Then we have people getting ready for the 4th of July parade and fair. Another off-screen kill happens. Everyone's enjoying the fair until the creepy kid shows up. The grunge version of the national anthem is sung. Then Sam connects with the creepy kid. 54 minutes into this movie, the congressman arrives. The sack race happens at the fair. Ralph's body is found. 63 minutes in, things are starting to pick up. Mom and Luis tell Jody about Sam's true personality. Another body's found. And then a head. 68 minutes in, the congressman is set off on a fireworks display. A police officer is downed by a flagpole. Everyone flees from the fair. Jody and Jen learn of Sam's true identity. The fact that Uncle Sam is really Uncle Sam. Bum, bum, bum. Sergeant, the sergeant is found dead in Sam's coffin. Jed plans to defeat Sam. Then Sam and Jed have a showdown in Louise's house. We're at 78 minutes. Sam and Jody have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Then there's cannon fire. There's explosions at 83 minutes. And then Jody rids himself of his army toys that he's played with for many, many years. And that rounds out this movie. 89 minutes long. 89 minutes way too long. But you know what? I was born in 1989, so 89 minutes, 89's a good time. So, did the cover match up with the movie? What do you think? Not at all. I mean, on the cover is a really zombified-looking version of Uncle Sam, and in the movie, it's just a guy in an Uncle Sam costume. It doesn't look anything like that. It's just... Even the zo his zombified face is corroding like a um, corpse. doesn't look anything like that. It, it's it, a burn uh, victim. He's yeah, a burn he's victim. Yeah, he's a burn victim, and this is just a zombie. It, it was completely misleading. I like the picture overall. It's a parody of the actual Uncle Sam picture, but no, it wasn't in the movie, and it was, in my opinion, completely misleading. Yeah, I mean, the, the costume, even the costume for Uncle Sam was really cheap looking, and... Everything about this movie was It was, was just cheap a looking. white face mask. It wasn't like it was a detailed Uncle Sam mask or anything. Uh, I don't it, know. Because he actually stole an Uncle Sam costume in the movie, so it was just a cheap one. It wasn't a zombified Uncle Sam. It was just a zombie in an Uncle Sam costume. So it's kind of just irony that he was Uncle Sam in an Uncle Sam outfit. You call it irony, I call it stupid, but I don't want to mince, mince words too much. I mean, uh, and as far as it saying that the only people that can stop him are a 10-year-old boy and Isaac Hayes, I mean, really, they just had to set him on fire? Yeah, that's how they defeat him. They just all light a cannon and shoot him, and he's just walking right into the cannon fire, not even making any effort, which is really weird, because um, at one point, we actually see him teleporting. He, this guy is is running away from him, and he teleports next to him three times. Oh, it's, it's not teleporting. It's an old slasher trick. We'll learn about those later on. Oh, huh? okay. I'd love to see that redeemed. So... That's about it. I mean, it doesn't really match up with the cover art. The description is... It's kind of on. It's kind of off. It, it really was just a ploy to use the Uncle Sam name. This really could have been like an any time of the year movie. It really could have been an anybody killer. It, it just seemed like it was really put together to capitalize on July 4th. Well, like, I kind of see why they chose Uncle Sam and they did all that, because there is a lot of, I guess, commentary in it. Um, it wasn't done very well, but you can definitely see they were trying to make a point. We'll get into that a little later, but um, there were definitely reasons why they chose Uncle Sam and chose the 4th of July and the whole America theme, but I, it was just such a bad movie that I don't really care what their theme was and they were going with. It was not well done. So the special effects... I think the only good special effect was the, the actual makeup that was done on Uncle Sam, his burn makeup, was fairly good. I liked it. Oh, well, and the only thing that did match up he with the cover green. was the fact that his uh, his eyes were yellow, just like the Uncle Sam on the cover. I didn't even want to give them credit with that. Like, yeah, they they just ordered the wrong contacts. Pretty much, it was it was happenstance. He actually looks like a cat on there. Like he's got the like, little cat eyes, marbles or something like that. Um, but even the the makeup and the the murder scenes were more or less just applications. You didn't actually see the murder happen. It was off screen, and then you would have a shot of the dead person 
or someone would find a dead body later on in the movie. So it didn't really showcase any kind of special effects. Personally, with the makeup, I thought he looked like a moldy turd, but that was just me. The only um, special effect that really was a special effect and took place before your eyes was the pyrotechnics, which were done well. It was fire. Yeah, you mean, can't really get fire wrong if you're using actual fire. Yeah, it's it's hard to even credit them with that because, like you said, it's actual fire and they had fireworks. Oh, wow, fireworks! So this movie really didn't depend on special effects. Oh wait, or wait the we need to mention one special effect at the end of the movie. They have the most stunning, amazing special effects I've ever seen in my life. Okay, so as Cody is symbolically burning all of his army toys, we see a slow motion choppy turn towards the camera as he smiles. Then the ca- then the screen just cracks in one of those late 90s, early 2000s special effects. You know, the ones that people figured out they can use on their movie maker. And it was just stunning. Like, it was just absolute genius. So, uh, as we've said, because this movie didn't really use special effects that much, it, it wasn't a special effects-driven movie like Feast or Splatter Farm. It was uh, trying to be story-driven, but it really just dragged itself out. It's like, I get what they were trying to go for, but not so much. Days of Our Lives with a murder. Actually, like, halfway through the movie, I was thinking, I feel like this is a Lifetime movie. Actually, you know what? Soap operas move faster than this movie did. Yeah, kind of, and they're, they look better. Like, the... The lighting was really odd. Like, everything looked kind of had, like, a tint of orange. Like, it was definitely made on very cheap, uh, very cheaply with very cheap uh, materials. It just had this odd, like, very obviously VHS kind of feel to it. And which normally doesn't bother me, but it just seemed so... Out of place? Out of place, yeah. It really took it out of the mood. And then the bad act, well, we'll get into the acting later, but, um, yeah, it just wasn't very good at all. I mean, yeah, everything looks very dated in this movie. Yeah. You can really watch this movie and be like, man, that was the 90s, and not get it confused with any other time period. But it's not even a good, like, oh, that was the 90s. It's like, yeah, 90s. So what about plot problems? What what did you see wrong in the plot? Were there plot holes? Were there things that weren't tied up? Were there things not explained? And the answer to all of this is yes. Yeah, most definitely yes. Like, well, first of all, in the beginning of the movie... Um, At, on June 14th. Yeah, June 14th. The military finds a crashed plane, which happens to be the same one that went down when... Three years ago. Yeah, three years ago, what Sam was in. And he wakes up, his dead body reanimates, and kills these soldiers. But then he stays he stays uh, dead, I guess in a state of stasis, until July 4th. So there was an almost month where he just didn't do anything, and... I don't know why the 4th of July, I guess he somehow knew it was the 4th of July, even though he was in a coffin. I guess his uh, patriotic senses were tingling or something like I that. I mean, maybe maybe he thought June 14th was actually July 14th, because I believe that's Bastille Day, which is like the French Revolution, or the French 4th of July kind of independence celebration. Right, so maybe he got confused in that, you know, American. he's supposed to arise on every country's independent day. But it doesn't make any sense. There's no explanation. He just kind of wakes up on those couple days. Wakes up on June 4th, 14th. Ah, oh, fuck. Oh, I guess I'm going back to sleep. Yeah, so that's one of the plot problems. Again, explaining what went on with the creepy kid, they allude to the fact that he was in a fireworks accident that was caused by his friends, but they really don't explain why he's disfigured, why he's crippled. Or why he has a psychic link with Sam. And he didn't even really do anything like with it. He just said to Jody, um, Oh, I know who the killer is. It's your uncle. Sam. Which, yeah, your uncle, Sam. Which, there was no even point of that. Like He would have figured it out later, and that didn't help them kill him. I guess they figured out, oh, he'll be at your aunt's house. But even that, they could have figured out later if he had spoken to Jody directly. He was just there to be creepy and to be a, just be a creepy kid with a link to Sam to make it seem more supernatural, but there was really no point to him. And then the army sergeant who's trying to get with Sam's wife, Sam's sister, 
he's in a couple scenes and he actually has his own scene that like you're trying to build character with him and then you don't see him until they find his dead body 40 minutes later yeah like he's ta- he's talking about how he wants to bang uh, Sam's wife and his sister in law or sister and then you think, oh, he's going to get murdered because here's the guy acting like a jackass. He's showing his th- true colors. This is, in every horror movie, this is the point where they get killed. And then nothing happens. The scene gets cut. And then you see later he's dead in the coffin, but there was no point to that. The other big problem I had with this movie is I could not tell Sam's wife and Sam's sister apart. Yeah, they looked very similar. And they weren't supposed to be sisters. They were, like, sister-in-laws, so... So yeah, it really doesn't make sense. Uh, maybe it's just my my blonde prejudices or something that they all look alike. That's racist. But I can't tell them apart, and their personalities aren't any different. Their acting skills are not any different. They're just the same person. Well, every character in the movie is basically the same, except Sam and Isaac Hayes. Which Isaac Hayes' character was playing Isaac Hayes. Exactly. Hello, children. So the audio... In the opening scene when I rewatched this movie last night, the audio doesn't sync up. It's dubbed for that one scene. And then the rest of the movie is actually in line. The audio is fine. But I just thought it was interesting that that first scene wasn't, wasn't done live. Or if it was done live, they were just like, oh, we're going to scrap it and try again. I mean, the plot was understandable enough. Was it pl- paced well? No. It drug on for about 30 minutes too long. Yeah, and the first 30 minutes of it, well, close to 30 minutes, nothing happened. It was just they're preparing for it. You get to meet Jody. He um, tells you how patriotic he is, how he wants to be like Sam. That went on for way too long. And you get a bunch of bad acting. And then finally he reanimates and starts killing people. At 42 minutes. Was it really 42 minutes? It took 42 minutes for him to come back. Now, see, here's the thing. The first five minutes of the movie, however, he murders two people. And you have the Uncle Sam montage, which is the best part of the movie. Was that even five minutes? It felt like way shorter than that. Then you have nothing going on for the next 38 minutes until he kills again. I just, I don't know how this movie dragged itself on. So, what did you think about the acting? I thought it was dry. I thought, everybody stopped mid-sentence, like this, because they just wanted to add more time to the movie. Well, going back to, like, when I said it was a uh, Lifetime movie, everyone stops when they talk, because... They want to emphasize what they're saying too much. It doesn't sound natural, and it's always so dramatic. Like, no, don't do that. And it was... None of the dialogue was very good. Um, and nothing made sense. You could tell every line was just to get them from point A to point B. Like, At one point, Jody's mom's boyfriend was actually making fun of Uncle's, um, Uncle Sam. At, at his, his wake. Yeah, at his wake. And... Jody gets pissed off, understandably so. And his mom hears it. There's no mistaking about that. She's right there hearing that. And Jody tells him basically to fuck off. And she gets mad at him, going, You can't talk that way. Go, Go to, to your, your room. Go to your room. It was just so awful. And any normal person would be like, Hey, this is my brother's funeral. Even if I didn't like him, which Jody didn't even know she didn't like him at the time. Um,. It was just such a a terrible line, and that was basically how almost every line went. They were so forced, they were so artificial. It was, except for Isaac Hayes' lines, because I kept thinking of it as chef, so. But you know what the best part about having bad dialogue is? I think I know. We get to have a quote quote wars! All right, who goes first? I'll start this one off. Don't be afraid. It's only friendly fire. By Sam. The way you shoot, you should get a job working at the post office. Some Uh, random carny. I hope you got an eyeful, said by Sam as he stabbed someone in the eye. I don't want to bother you, just thought I might bleed to death. Jody to his mom. You never fought for your country. You just killed for the love of killing. Stay away from the coffin. It's not something to play with. You have to be dead first. Are you volunteering? Too many rolls and jelly donuts. Too many mothballs, too. I think that one was my favorite one. Oh, 
That was a little intense there. Yeah, it was so hard finding good lines, too. So what else can we say about this movie? We, we've said mostly bad things up to this point. You might tell we're not too big fans of this movie. I don't plan on ever seeing it again, just to make that clear. So, at this point, if you would like to tweet us at bmoviebros, all one word, before you finish this podcast, tell us what you think our score might be on the shot scale at the end of our review. So, what else can we say about this movie? I want to talk about the fire scenes real quick. Okay. So, there were a couple things that went on during the explosions. And during one of the explosion scenes, a part of the set that caught on fire fell on one of the stuntmen. Really? Before he could get out of the fire. Now, luckily, it was a cheaply made set, so what fell on him was light enough that he could just kind of, like, take it off and get out of there. But still, that's, like, a scary thought. Yeah, it really seems like they didn't really do they really didn't prepare when making this movie they're like well we've got people we've got an uncle sam suit and we've got an idea let's go with it and it didn't work they tried to make it they thought they were a lot more talented than they than they actually were that was really how i felt in this and they didn't really bother endangering people either with the explosion well there were there were a lot of safety features in place it was just one of those like unknown unknowns yeah i guess i can i can understand that Um, But there was another, of course, stupid thing that happened when they set the actor on fire that was playing Uncle Sam in the climax scene. Before they set him on fire, he's got a tube in his mouth, and that's so that he can breathe. Now, they're supposed to give you warning when they set you on fire to take a final breath and throw that plastic tube away so it doesn't melt to your mouth. Well, the guy who was setting him on fire didn't give him warning. But luckily, the guy saw him coming at him with the torch and took a quick breath and threw the, the breathing tube away. But again, another like really potential disaster that was averted. It's really hard to forget to say that they were responsible after two things, but I'll give it to them. And then, of course, this is their fault. As a result of the big explosion at the end of the movie, they actually this was a real house in a neighborhood that they blew up part of. And whoever owned the house were like, yeah, you can blow it up. We don't, we don't care. And, Oh, I think I heard this. They like set other houses on fire. They didn't set other houses on fire, but they had windows up to a mile away that were shattered. That was it. I knew it affected the rest of the, um, the neighborhood by the explosions. Okay. When you've got that many things going wrong, they, they fucked up somebody making the movie like, Somebody had to have known that there was a potential that's happening. Either no one spoke up, or they're like, "Oh, don't worry, it'll be fine." You know, I there's just too many things that gone wrong. They endangered way too many people. That that's fucked up. Well, let's go beyond the real for a minute and talk about the company that released this movie. Um, they are Blue Underground, and they were actually founded in 2002 by. William Lustig, who was the director of Uncle Sam. Very talented man. Um, They originally formed the company to film making of documentaries for other movies, which may be the reason that I enjoyed the fire special effects documentary on this movie more than the actual movie. Um, It specializes... They specialize in releasing obscure movies by directors you may not have heard of, And really hard to find movies from the 60s through the 80s. I'm assuming most of them are porns. They like to find original prints and restore them as opposed to, like, finding an old VHS copy on a store shelf and being like, oh, this movie hasn't been released on DVD, let's do it. I mean, that's kind of cool overall. Um, Up to today's date, they have distributed 217 films. And they've actually produced 80 films of their own that have the blue underground production company as its backing. Now this will not be the last blue underground movie that we do. Um, I actually believe next week's movie will be a blue underground movie too. Don't quote me on that. We'll find out soon enough. Now there are some times when we have conflicting views on things once in a while. So we have to get into some cinema conflict here. This movie was rated R. I don't think 
it deserved an R rating. Yeah, I don't either. I'd go more with um, the really most of the deaths were off screen. It was really rather annoying to watch. There wasn't. I don't even know if there was any swearing. At least any of that I noticed. Um, I I honestly thought this was more of a PG thirteen kind of movie, to be honest. And I th- have seen things on TV rated TV PG that are worse than this movie. You've seen something on TV rated PG thirteen that had a guy get hung from a flagpole to death. I've seen people eviscerated by werewolves and their guts hanging out, and it be TV PG. Well, let, name one show. Like I'd love to see this. The movie Dog Soldiers. Dog edited for Sci-Fi Channel, not Seafy, but the Sci-Fi Channel back when it was still the Sci-Fi Channel was TV PG when it was aired, and had guts hanging out, people getting bitten by werewolves, blood spurting everywhere. You had pools of blood on the floor. And In the had... actual edited version, yes, it wasn't. They didn't. They didn't edit any of that. No. Okay, because half the time when I see a PG thirteen movie, it's really. There's hardly, there may not even be any blood there. Like, somebody might have cut their arm and they're like, oh, there's blood. And, oh, that's a little too risky sometimes. But that, that's pretty rare. But even I mean, the, not that I disagree with it. I think that kids can handle that kind of stuff. Even the only bloody scene was when you know, the one teacher went back into the school to get the axe. And then you see him lying on the floor with an axe in his head. And there's like... A dribble of blood coming out of his forehead. There's that could have easily been taken out. There's really not a reason for this to be an R-rated movie, other than the fact that they wanted it to be rated R. I agree with that. I mean, they do heavily hint at rape a few times, like when um, Sam's sister and his and um, Sam's wife are talking. They say he did terrible things to us, and it's obvious it's rape. I mean, this is practically a lifetime movie. If a woman isn't being beaten and raped, then it's, you know, they're doing something wrong. But they didn't even come out and say it, But even though they heavily hinted at it. So I can't see their R rating. They definitely wanted it to be R rated. They chose to have that rating to give themselves credibility as a horror movie. Because no one's going to see a red PG-13 horror movie. I'm sorry, they're just not going to. And if you do... It's gonna be a sad show. Yeah, you're watching it with your kids and but wait I until just, it goes. I think it, on your phone. I think it could have cut a PG rating. I'm gonna do a PG-13. I mean, I'll take your word for that. That um, PG movies have been like that, and like I said, I completely agree that they should. I I don't think that kids are gonna be traumatized by oh no, there's blood and someone died because I'll never experience that in my life in my sheltered little little hole in the wall. But I. I think that in most standards nowadays, it would be considered PG-13. I don't agree with it, but it does seem like that would really fit the qualifications for, in most cases. I think today's children would not understand this movie simply for the fact that a woman gets in trouble for smoking weed. And as we're seeing trending more and more, it's soon going to become something that's legal. And they're going to be like, why did Uncle Sam kill that girl? She didn't do anything un-American. Yeah, I love when that kind of stuff happens. Like, I'm assuming in the 19... Like, right after Prohibition, whenever there would be movies where people would get in trouble for drinking, and you were, like, a young kid, it's like, well, what's going on? I mean, Daddy does that at the table all the time. I mean, if they ever end the war on drugs and legalize everything, everyone's going to be so confused by every drug movie and, and mafia movie and everything like that. I mean, that's how the future's going to go. It's quite strange. So, let's get into our final take on this movie. I think we've talked about it long enough. So, if you could give this a score from 1 to 10 on our shot scale. Now, remember, folks, our shot scale is a reverse scale. It goes from 1 to 10, 1 being the best, 10 being the worst. And it's how many shots do you need to take to get through this movie? So, just a score, 1 to 10, what do you say? I'm actually going to give this movie a, hmm, I'm going to give it a six. I'm going to give this movie a five. So we're pretty close on this. So why don't you give us justification? Why are you saying six out of ten, six shots to get through this movie? Well, this movie really was not fun to watch at all. It was... It was dragged on. It dragged on. The performances were terrible. The effects were terrible. It was just unpleasant to look at in general, and I was very disappointed. I expected at the beginning of the movie, Uncle Sam kills kills these guys, and he says, 
what's wrong? It's only friendly fire or something like that. And that was a great line. From there, I thought, oh, this is going to be this, like, one-liner, like, um, kind of murderer kind yeah, of guy. It had a very good setup. Yeah, it seemed like that. And then I actually see where they were going with that. Like, he was supposedly killed by friendly fire, and it did seem like – they actually mentioned a bunch of things about that. He was and mad about that, so it was more like not just being funny. It was – this is an ironic thing, showing and, how angry he was. But there were actually, they attempted at a moral. They attempted at, a, I guess, a lesson at the movie. And where I don't think they did a good job at it, I definitely see where they were going with, and I commend them for it. Like, there's definitely a lot of social commentary. There's a lot of, um, you kind of see, see like, a lot of the moral lessons going with it. It's just the dry performances, the really ugly cinematography, and just the poor writing in general really ruined that. But... There was a decent story buried within this. So after, you're saying that after the opening scene where they had that witty, ironic line, someone got out their irony board and was like, let me straighten this shit out here. Pretty much. Well, I have to say, Uncle Sam, it's a completely average slasher flick. There's not many things that are memorable about this film. Just the fact that it's a 4th of July themed film and has a wonderful performance by Isaac Hayes. There's nothing to really distinguish it from other low-grade horror movies. The characters are dry, they read their lines, and aside from the flagpole death, all the slasher killings are done off-screen, only for other people to find them later on. Now, the opening scene was very misleading, setting up a very comic tone, which quickly lost itself as the movie crept toward its climax. Although I berate this movie a lot, I do have a soft spot for it because it happens on the 4th of July, and my birthday is July 3rd, so it, it, it's got a special place in my heart. The, the effort put forth to create a movie themed around the 4th of July ho holiday just makes me push this to from like a 6 down to a 5 on the shot scale. Uncle Sam really is a forgettable movie. It's not worthy of rewatching. The slow pace, the off-screen kills are real turn-offs. And unless you really want to see this movie for its theme, I would just pass it up. That was a very beautiful statement. Now, we know that not all of you out there like the same kind of crap that we do. So we like to take a few moments to give this B-movie an A-movie companion. A movie that is like this movie, but better quality. So, I'm going to start this off with my A-movie companion. My A-movie companion, the movie that is this movie except higher class, is Die Hard with a Vengeance. Why might Die Hard with a Vengeance be the same movie as Uncle Sam, you might ask? Well, here we go. We see John McClane back in his home environment, as opposed to the last two films. Just like we see Sam Harper back in his home environment after he was killed in the war. Both movies are based in vengeance, both on behalf of the antagonists in Uncle Sam, Sam Harper, in Die Hard with a Vengeance, Simon Gruber. They both take place in America. They both have lots of explosions. Well, Uncle Sam doesn't have lots of explosions, but explosions! They both have black support characters, which play a major role in the, the development of the main character, Uncle Sam being Jody, and Die Hard with a Vengeance being, of course, John McClane, played by Samuel L. Jackson in Die Hard with a Vengeance, and Isaac Hayes in Uncle Sam. They both left a city in panic. Die Hard with a Vengeance, New York, and Uncle Sam, whatever shitty little town it took place in. Both films are from the 90s. And just like those that Uncle Sam kills are un-American, those terrorists who fucked with John McClane's day were terrorists and yeah. un-American. Now I really just want to see John McClane beating the shit out of a zombie dressed as Uncle Sam. So, Paul, what is your A-movie companion? My A-movie companion is the movie Independence Day. And there are a few reasons for this. One, they both take place on the 4th of July. Um, let's see. In Uncle Sam, you've got a zombie of a man who 
who well he's from earth so it was a terrestrial threat a kind of a homebred sort of villain whereas opposed to independence day they were aliens so i feel like that's a good kind of balance you got the earth villains and then you got the aliens um and independence day is just a really awesome movie and uncle sam is not so much so and i just really like independence day that's my justification for that. They both take place on the 4th of July, and you just need to watch Independence Day to forget about this one. Whereas you would put both of these movies on on Independence Day, you would put Uncle Sam on when you don't really want to watch a movie but want to have something themed going on, and you put Independence Day on when everyone's ready to sit down and watch an actual movie. Yeah, like Uncle Sam is when you're... Well, I can see Uncle Sam is when you're already drunk and nearly passed out, and everybody else is, or they've already left. Whereas Independence Day, I'll, I'll watch that any day of the week. So, those are our A-Movie Companions. If you have a different A-Movie Companion and you would like to share that with us, please hit us up on our Facebook page at B-Movie Bros, or tweet us at B-Movie Bros, all one words. Tell us what and why that is your A-Movie Companion. I think Rambo would have made a good A-Movie Companion, now that I think about oh, it. Oh, yeah, coming back from, from the NAM. Yeah, it's like, well, it's... Betrayed by his people. Yeah. I can see that. Killing. Murder. Yeah. First blood. I'm still going to go with Independence Day, though. I'm still going with Die Hard with a Vengeance. So the last thing we need to do for our movie is tell you how to drink away the flick. Drink away the flick. Come on and get your drink. Let's drink away the flick. Do, 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 do. So I'm going to give you some fun drinking games for this movie. Then Paul is going to give you some of his own. So, the first time... Oh, sorry. The first rule. Every time a death happens off screen, take a drink. The second rule. Anytime someone is wearing red, white, and blue in a scene, take a drink. Now, that happens much more often than you may think. Number three. Every time someone disrespects America, take a drink. Number four. Anytime Isaac Hayes speaks about the war, take a drink. And number five, anytime a cannon is fired, finish your drink. Number six, every time they make some kind of terrible 90s special effect uh, attempt, take a drink. Number seven, every time they mention or... Suggest that rape occurred, take a drink. And number eight, every time you feel you should be drinking, take a drink. And those are the ways that you can drink away this flick. Now before I close up with something, I just have to say, I watched this movie a second time just to get quotes and to do the plot points. And the other night, I had to drive home from Cleveland... As you know, Heather with the weather off of River Talk on the river's edge is my wife, and that's where her family is from. And we had some really bad storms, and I could only go like 30 miles an hour, and I had to like clench the steering wheel and hunch up over it to see more than five feet in front of me. And a two and a half hour drive took me four hours to do. And I would rather do that again than watch this movie again, just to reiterate how much I would not want to watch this movie again, I'd rather do that. Yeah, I don't blame you. I do want to say one quick thing, since I mentioned there there was like a, mor- a lot of moral um, commentary or social commentary in this. I can't tell if this was an anti-American movie or, or not, because they show Sam and Jody as being super patriotic and how bad that is, which is fine. That's not... That's neither one way or the other. But there was definitely a tone of and i believe the actual moral lesson was uh jody was trying to follow sam he really looked up to him and then realizing that sam wasn't the man he wanted to be and kind of choosing your influences because sam at the end tries to tempt him to be just like him and i think that was the moral lesson but like i said i don't know it was really hard to figure out it as far as like social commentary and moral lessons this was done very poorly as the rest of the movie was just to throw in one little bit of one last bit of american propaganda here if the atomic bomb is dropping duck and cover you'll be okay and if you want to tune in next week 
you will hear us after we lock ourselves in and try to escape from the terror of the 1990 horror sci-fi movie Sinjinor. So, until next time, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at BMovie Bros, which is all one word, or like us on Facebook at BMovie Bros. You can do both even. We'd really like that. So, be brave, be alive, be back next week. <laughs>